Hello there, my name is Ismos and welcome to another Blender tutorial and uh, today we're going to be making this scene here. Uh, just let me play it back for you. So we have this cave scene and uh, we have a drone coming in to scan uh, for whatever it's scanning for. And uh, you can see the leather beams, uh, leather beams and uh, everything. Yes, so that's what we're going to be creating. So I'm just going to do a quick run through of, and talk about the different things uh, that I did, how I modeled the cave and then some bit of texturing. I'll look at the notes. Uh, but uh, if you want to watch the entire thing, I'm just, I'm, I'm also going to make another version of the tutorial, like a tutorial series on my second channel, just to explain uh, the step by st step by step, the different things I had to do here are uh, for beginners who are not very versed uh, with Blender. But uh, for more intermediate or advanced uh, users, uh, we are just going to go through the project a little bit here. But uh, if you are be a beginner and just want to look at uh, a step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial series, I'll be doing that on my second channel, Blender Money. Uh, yeah. So let's get into the tutorial or the walkthrough. So the first thing I did was model this uh, uh, this cave and uh, to, to do that simply what I did is that uh, I just added a, started with a curve object uh, so that I can kind of trace trace out the curve the cave, the shape of the cave I wanted. something like that you can hit V to change the handle type uh, to automatic uh, this kind of uh, creates points that are a little bit have a better that have better carving to them so it's something like that and then what I did I went into the curve object data and uh, geometry and increased the bevel depth at kind of gave this uh, the width I want and then I uh, just to set up my camera just use alt just select the camera and then control alt zero uh, to position your camera uh, something like that and now I just split uh, this area so that I have my shader my shader editor and uh, my camera preview here I'm also going to change the camera angle to something like 25 uh, so that is a more wider angle and uh, maybe increase uh, mm -hmm. the size of this by increasing the bevel just a bit. Now we can start shaping this even further. So maybe we can push this to the to this side just a bit so that we can see uh, the outside as well. Now, after you're done, uh, just go to wireframe by hitting Z and then uh, go to wireframe here or just use uh, these buttons here uh, because we want to look at uh, the geometry here We want a, lo a little bit of We want more polygons here uh, so that we can use uh, the displacement modifier and uh, for that we can increase the resolution here and also the bevel resolution here for the For these lines and loops and after we done that If after we're done with that we can just right click and then convert this to a mesh uh, so that we can start using the so that we can start using uh, the display the displacement modifier uh, but before you convert this make sure that uh, your faces here are not uh, this long they are more like a square so let's go back a step back a bit and uh, look at this so I can turn off turn on a wireframe temporarily here uh, it's under viewport overlays so that I can see uh, the length of these uh, of these rectangles. Uh, so if I go to the curve object here, curve data, I can increase what is. Let's see. I can increase the count here until. Okay, so the maximum count is, seems to be thirty-two. Uh, turn. That's okay. Uh, or we can just reduce the resolution here so that we get squares it doesn't matter if they are perfect uh, but you, you just need something close to it so uh, so that the displacement is not that distorted is not too distorted so now apply this to a mesh and then go to the modifiers and add a displacement modifier and then add a new modif uh, displacement and uh, we're going to use a noise 
texture not a cl sorry a clouds texture then let me first turn off this wireframe and uh, we can go to these modifiers again reduce the displacement you can see we are getting some good distortion here and uh, then we can also add another displacement you can just copy this and make sure you hit this number so that you duplicate uh, the texture because we want to lay over uh, the textures to create us uh, some bit of smaller details right now you see we have these light details but we don't have smaller details in here so for that we're just going to use a second modifier but to make sure that we are not changing this texture uh, because you can see it's being utilized by the two modifiers so if we change this here uh, we are also going to be changing the first uh, texture so just hit these two here to create a duplicate of this texture and now we can modify this separately so it seems that uh, the first texture is overpowering this one so and maybe the size let's see what's going on oh i've turned it off so that's why it wasn't infl influencing it so it's sometimes it's harder to control the scale of uh of these displacements uh, that's why I, add, I usually add an empty to control that so shift a empty or add maybe this uv sphere then select change the texture coordinate for the second displacement modifier and uh, change it to object and select this as the object now if i scale this i can scale up or scale down uh, the texture so the problem we're having is that uh, right now the the most of these vertices are being influenced by the first uh, displacement so the second displacement is not really doing much because there is not a lot of geometry to work with uh, so what we are going to do is add a subdivision surface modifier and uh, have it above uh, the second modifier displacement modifier so that it has some uh, extra resolution to work with you can now if we scale this down really down somewhere around there and uh, just reduce its influence just a bit you can see we're getting a few extra details uh what i did in the second uh video sorry in the original version is that uh, i went in and also started pulling some of these uh, face some faces down uh, to kind of add in a few details so i think what i can do here to make it a little bit more interesting is add is kind of create uh, a, a splitting path here so we have kind of two ways here to go through uh, so for that i can just first turn off these modifiers just look at uh, the main mesh and i can select let's see those faces these faces here I actually just select them because i want to select these two up and down and I increase uh, the selection by control plus and uh, if you right click uh, when you're in face mode you can you get these uh, bridge faces uh, that can connect uh, those faces as long as they have <coughs> uh, the same count of polygons so let's just increase now if we go to edit mode and turn off out of edit mode and start adding in these modifiers you can see what we have done but uh, the problem is that uh, we don't have enough resolution here uh, for the modifiers you can see this is really smooth uh, from which is not the same for the other part so we can just add in extra loops if i stand off this extra loops so that we can get uh, the same effect i'm also going to smoothen this a bit so i'll just hit plus and then right click you can go to vertex mode and then uh, smoothen vertices you can increase this and uh, maybe increase the iterations i can also scale this down a bit turn on proportional editing scale this down a bit i'm also going to turn on connected only and change the fall off here to something different let's see something like this maybe okay uh, it seems our noise modifier is kind of pushing these a bit too uh, too high so what i can do i guess 
is that I'm just going to give these a different vertex group so that they are not affected by this modifier because you can see uh, this displacement modifier are pushing these too much inside uh, that uh, they are kind of get they are kind of intersecting with each other so what I'm going to do is uh, just go into uh, object data I think it's called uh, what is this object data properties and turn on vertex group assign this a vertex group and then invert that selection assign this a second vertex group so we want uh, the first displacement only affect uh, the second group so that we don't get those intersections and uh, I can copy this modifier and uh, this time I want it to affect uh, the second group the first the first group but uh, maybe with a reduced uh, strength uh, so that we don't have that intersecting of vertices and, uh, you can still because this is this is looking too straight so I can just so start selecting a few of these vertices and push them out turn on proportion editing start kind of bending this a bit uh, if you have I guess we can put this displacement behind under the subdivision surface so let me scale this down even further so you can see how you can easily start shaping the key the the object uh, if you start losing some resolution you can just start adding in a few extra loops where necessary like so and I think that looks better I think in the next part we can look at uh, uh, the materials thank you for watching